Hello everyone, and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. In this video, we'll be talking about activating or deactivating groups in electrophilic aromatic substitutions. By the end of this video, the questions that you should be able to answer are how do substituents change the rate of an EAS reaction, and how do these substituents donate or withdraw electrons from the ring via induction or resonance. If you need an introduction to electrophilic aromatic substitutions in general, please go ahead and subscribe and click on the video at the top of the screen. Up until now, we've been talking about electrophilic aromatic substitutions on just benzene without any substituents on this ring. What happens if we add a substituent to this ring, such as a methyl group? So adding that methyl group to benzene will give us what's normally known as toluene. So the question we'd like to answer is, will toluene react in an EAS reaction faster or slower than unsubstituted benzene? To answer that, we can remember that alkyl groups are electron donating via induction or what's called hyperconjugation. If you need a review on hyperconjugation, you can click on the video at the top of the screen. What that means is we can draw some sort of a dipole moment where this methyl group is going to be donating some additional electron density into the benzene ring. And remember, these reactions are called electrophilic aromatic substitutions because the aromatic ring is reacting with an electrophile, or a species with excess positive charge, something that's looking for extra electrons. Because of that, the more electron density that's in the ring, the faster this reaction will occur. This is going to be the more nucleophilic benzene rings. So then we can say that toluene will react faster in an EAS mechanism than benzene. And what we say about this is that the substituent on the ring, in this case an alkyl group, is electron donating, so we say that it is activating towards EAS reactions by induction. What if we look at another very common substituent, and that is going to be an oxygen. So we can draw the simplest compound like this, which is what's called phenol, where we have an OH group on that benzene ring. You might think that because oxygen is very electronegative, it's going to be electron withdrawing from the ring. And while that is true for induction, we can also draw a resonance structure where we swing one of the lone pairs on the oxygen down to this carbon-oxygen bond to form a double bond, and then one of these pi bonds in the ring can come up to one of these carbons and form a negative formal charge. Now because we have this resonance structure that involves a full negative charge in the ring, and remember that negative formal charge can be delocalized to the other carbons within the ring. This is going to mean that we have a very activated ring towards EAS reactions. So the most common activating groups by resonance are oxygen and nitrogen, any of these atoms with lone pairs that they can donate to form a double bond with the ring. And these resonance effects will be much stronger than the inductive effects because of the electronegativity of oxygen or nitrogen. Okay, so what if we want to think about electron withdrawing groups? So we could draw this variant of toluene, where we have this trifluoromethyl group on the benzene ring. So this is trifluoromethylbenzene. And now instead of the electron donating effect we get from the methyl group, we have these very electronegative fluorine atoms that are going to withdraw electron density from the ring by induction. So if we wanted to, we could draw a dipole moment again, and this time, the negative end of the dipole will be pointing away from the ring. Now because we have electron density pulled away from the ring, this ring is said to be deactivated towards EAS reactions. So this molecule would react more slowly than benzene would. Just like before, we can also consider some resonance effects. So what if we have nitrobenzene? We talked about how to synthesize nitrobenzene in my previous video. And here we can notice a resonance structure like this. So we can have one of the pi bonds in the ring come up to form a double bond with that nitrogen, and at the same time have one of these nitrogen-oxygen double bonds come up to form a lone pair on the oxygen atom. And this gives us this resonance contributor, where we now have a positive formal charge in the benzene ring and negative formal charges on both of these oxygens in the nitro group. And just like with that phenol example earlier, that positive charge can be delocalized to other carbons throughout the ring. This is going to make the ring very deactivated towards EAS reactions. And this can happen with a variety of unsaturated substituents, so anything with a double bond, like in the nitro group, where that double bond can become a lone pair 
and withdraw electron density from the ring in a resonance contributor. The last substituent I'd like to mention are the halogens. So we could think about bromobenzene. Remember, we also talked about how to synthesize these compounds through some EAS reactions. And with these halogen substituents, we have two competing effects. First of these is induction. So halogens are more electronegative than carbon, which means that we're going to have a dipole withdrawing electron density from the ring. So this means that we will have a weakly deactivating effect through induction. However, we can also consider resonance effects. So we can grab one of the lone pairs from the bromine, bring it down to form a double bond with the ring, and kick one of these pi bonds off to form a negative formal charge. And remember that negative formal charge shows us that the ring is activated to EAS reactions. And in a future video, we'll discuss how the induction and resonance effects compete, and what sort of things that that makes happen when we're talking about electrophilic aromatic substitutions. Now that we've learned why these effects happen, let's just write down a few of the most common substituents on benzene rings and how activating or deactivating they actually are. So we can start with the nitro group, and this is going to be one of the most deactivating groups. So again, that means nitrobenzenes will react in EAS reactions the slowest, followed by something like a trifluoromethyl group with that inductive effect. Next, a carboxylic acid or ester group. Remember that CO double bond is going to withdraw electron density by resonance. Then maybe our halides, such as chlorine. These are very weakly deactivating. Then we can come to hydrogen, so that is just the unsubstituted benzene ring. That is our standard. Then we have alkyl groups, like methyl groups. These are going to be weakly activating, followed by a phenol, so a OH group on that ring. And finally, something like an amino group, and that nitrogen will be very strongly activating to the ring. And again, we'll talk about more of the consequences of these effects in a future video. But before we end, I want to discuss the friedel crafts alkylation reactions that we talked about in the previous video. So remember, if we take benzene and treat it with a halo alkane, such as ethyl chloride, and we add in a Lewis acid catalyst, like aluminum trichloride, we can add that alkyl group to the benzene ring to form ethyl benzene. However, given what I've just talked about, we know that alkyl groups are electron donating or activating towards EAS reactions, which means that the product in this case will be even more susceptible to the friedel crafts reaction than the starting material. So the product will undergo additional alkylation to give the diethyl benzene product. But then this product is even more activated towards the same reaction. So we will get the triethyl benzene product, and so on. So this leads to some of the over-alkylation effects that I talked about in the previous video. And the Friedel Crafts alkylations are very difficult to stop at just one alkylation. Another factor to consider is considering nitrobenzene with that NO2 group. If we treat it under these same conditions, so with our ethyl chloride and aluminum trichloride catalyst, we now know that the nitro group is very electron withdrawing and very deactivating towards these reactions. So the Friedel Crafts alkylation will really not occur to any appreciable extent with these very deactivated rings. So that is yet another factor to consider when we're talking about these sorts of electrophilic aromatic substitutions. I hope this video helped you understand the effects of activating and deactivating groups on EAS reactions. If you liked it, please go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media, and if you're willing and able, consider donating to my Patreon page which helps me continue creating all of this content for all of you. Thanks for watching.